Wisconsin, the world's largest free jazz festival, is soon going to bring thousands of music fans to downtown Detroit. The stage is all set for Labor Day weekend when jazz artists from around the globe are going to perform at the 45th annual Detroit Jazz Festival. This year's event also coincides with the long-awaited grand opening of the Gretchen C. Valet Jazz Center on Wayne State University's campus. It is named after the festival's late sponsor and foundation chair. I spoke with the Detroit Jazz Festival Foundation President and Artistic Director Chris Collins, along with this year's official poster artist Jess Fendo and Wayne State's Vice President for Government and Community Affairs, Patrick Lindsay. This is my most favorite episode of the year. <laughs> Every year I look forward to talking about Jazz Fest. Uh, welcome to American Black Journal. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. All right, so Chris, I'm gonna start with you. Uh, we do this every year. I'm always blown away by what you managed to put together uh, for Detroit uh, every Labor Day, every Labor Day weekend. Uh, tell me about this year's Jazz Fest. Well, you know, we have an incredible team at Jazz Fest Foundation and we're in such an incredible city with partners like Wayne State University and, uh, and American Black Journal and others, you know, get the word out and let everyone know how special this, Thing really is and how fragile it can be but after 45 years we're still free and we're still one of the premier real jazz festivals in the world so to that that end we we as always uh, our programming we look to have those legacy artists you know billy childs monty alexander christian mcbride quintet james blood almer talk about cats and uh and, and we have the incredible world-class artists that are right here in detroit living here and coming from here, our legacy artists, the great Wendell Harrison and the Walter White Big Band, and, and some upcomers, Mark Rosenblatt and Hockey. These are cats looking to the future of where jazz is going to go. Um, and uh, some very special world premieres at the Jazz Festival, including uh, uh, Translinear Light, which is a, a beautiful tribute from the source, from the family of mm -hmm. uh, our great Detroit native, the great Alice Coltrane. Mm -hmm. uh, and it'll be with uh, Robbie Coltrane and uh, uh, Brandy Younger on harp and the Detroit Jazz Fest Orchestra and so many things celebrating this incredible legacy. And by the way, neat thing for your viewers, uh, Alice Coltrane's original harp, has been completely restored. We were worried it wasn't going to get done, but it's going to be here and be part of the premiere, wow. which is very, very this is a historic moment. So mix that with our artist in residence, the great Brian Blade, who will be playing with with uh, the Jazz Fest uh, big band. He'll be playing with Octet and, uh, of course, the Fellowship Band. So it's going to be quite special. Yeah, yeah. Um, 45 years, that's an incredible, that's an incredible run. Uh, talk about how significant that is for for Detroit, uh, this is this is not just about us, uh, but it does feature us, uh, and, and it features us to the world in a way that I'm not sure everybody who lives here quite understands. Uh, the festival is so much different and bigger uh, than it than it has been in the past. Uh, it really is a worldwide uh, phenomenon. It is. And, you know, everything we do in Detroit, these kind of things that draw tourists, you know, Jazz Festival is now drawing a third of its audience in person. It's about 325,000 people uh, uh, from outside the region, outside the country. Uh, our streams, which we have metric by a professional company, so there's no hyperbole. They, they, they're they free and they reach, uh, last year they reached 1.6 million people in 32 wow. countries. And uh, so it, it is, it's a Jazz Festival that's in a city that has a symbiotic relationship between its culture and jazz they feed one another they always have and it's also in the city the city the architecture in the skyline the, the the community is the backdrop for the entire festival so we're really proud of uh uh you know being being able to be an ambassador to the artists to the patrons and all around the world because detroit's a very special place and when they come here they're they're rather blown away uh, by that connectivity, so that that's uh, along with uh, we our last our last economic thing showed uh, uh, a little over thirty million dollars in economic development over the four days of Jazz Fest. So we're trying to do everything we can to be great citizens, keep this thing alive, and keep it available to everyone by keeping it free. Although when people can, we ask them to join our sponsors and our donors and help us reach that four point five million dollar note every year to keep it alive. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Patrick Lindsay, I'm going to bring you into the conversation here. Um, uh, this year's festival, of course, will feature uh, 
the Gretchen C. Valade Center, Jazz Performance Center on Wayne State University's campus. I actually have had a chance to be there a couple times already. Um, it is it is a mind blowing experience. I I predict that this will be, uh, if not the premier, it will be one of the premier music venues in in the city just because of how great it sounds, how great it looks, how great it feels. I mean, it is uh, it is a stunning achievement. Well, thank you, Stephen. I think you, I couldn't say it any better. Uh, as you can see, uh, I am uh, keeping Gretchen close to my heart. Uh, uh, Miss Belade's uh, generosity, not only to Wayne State, but to the world relative to building a world-class center where artists can come and be featured and do it in such an intimate setting, but in such a dynamic uh, place such as Wayne State. Uh, it is uh, a great honor for us to, to host it and to welcome the community uh, into uh, this space. You know, uh, I grew up here in Detroit. Uh, Detroit is a place, uh, in my opinion, where music is just a part of the fabric of our culture. Mm -hmm. And music is the most universal language I know. And we are most fluent in it here in Detroit between jazz, R&B, hip hop, gospel, classical, and the many other genres. How blessed are we to, to have such richness here but the Belay Center, in my opinion, will help to catapult and cultivate jazz even more so because of its strong roots here. Uh, people will be able to experience it, to learn it, uh, and to, to to grow it here in in the city and yeah. world through yeah. the Gretchen Team Belay Center. Yeah, and and talk about what it means to to Wayne to to have hosted the the construction of this and and that it will be part of uh, the campus. Well, you know, the university obviously had to also uh, put some skin in the game very significantly, mm -hmm. but it is uh, both a responsibility and uh, absolutely a one-of-a-kind opportunity for the university to attract students mm -hmm. uh, from around the world who want to study music. But what I love about it, Stephen, is that uh, at the Belay Center, not only will people be able to study the craft uh, of music, be it jazz, but also what I call the business of jazz. So students are introduced to, to lighting and sound technician and stage management and uh, production. Uh, there's a whole business side because at Wayne State, uh, we're here to help students go higher. The president has a prosperity agenda. Where can we take them from where they are, which most of our students come maybe not from the top economic strata, mm -hmm. but we leave them in a better place than when they arrive. And so students going through our music programs are able to not only uh, lead with a degree, but go out and make a living, make a life yeah. doing what they love. And so this center, again, will bring a lot more attention and a lot more uh, opportunity for students as they come study here uh, at Wayne State. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so Chris, every year now we, uh... We do a little special reveal here on American Black Journal, uh, the first look at the uh, Jazz Festival post. Are you ready to unveil this year's? I think we are. How about uh, Jess? Are you ready for the world to see your beautiful works? <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> Jess, uh, tell, me about, tell me about the poster. What inspired you? uh what is what does this this poster kind of mean to you what do you think it means to the festival in the city so when i saw the open call at first like i was thinking about what i could possibly do because i love jazz music so i knew i wanted to apply for this opportunity and so the one of the first things i thought of when um i was thinking of the detroit jazz festival was community I mean, it's one of the biggest jazz festivals ever. You have a whole bunch of people like flocking down to, you know, downtown Detroit, all with the same appreciation of like loving jazz music. I knew that I wanted to use like bright colors and not like super like stereotypical dark blue, like jazzy, like, you know, like super deep colors. Like I wanted it to be like a celebration. I wanted it to be fun. Like li there's literally like women dancing on the roof. And like, I wanted to show like what I felt like when I go to the jazz festival mm -hmm. and I see people having fun and being free and coming all together as one to like celebrate like one thing that like 
brings us together as a community because Detroit's been doing that forever. It's like a celebration of history. Um, the graffiti on the side of the building is to pay homage to like every great um, jazz musician. I guess you could say that there was. And uh, just to show that like we still appreciate that, like, you know, after they like transcended and like moved on from that. And like we still like have such a big appreciation for jazz music in Detroit. And um, that's basically just what I wanted to showcase. Yeah. Yeah. And and tell us a little bit about you, uh, Jess. What's your what's your story? Well, I do a whole bunch of different types of art in Detroit. Um, I've been here for a while now. I'm a student at a College for Creative Studies. I'm studying illustration and entertainment arts. Um, I love doing gallery shows. I love doing murals. Um, I recently just did a sculpture work for um, with City Walls for the NFL draft. And um, I just love uh, doing stuff for like nonprofits, like with the Steen Foundation and helping like the Bella Isle Conservancy. And I just love giving back to the community. So any way that I can volunteer that um, I could also use my art to help. It's like a win win for me. <laughs> so Yeah. yeah. Uh, and and what does it mean to you to have won this this call to to um, I mean, I'm Detroit sure, this way. I'm sure um, he could tell you, but when he called me, I like honestly couldn't believe it at first. <laughs> like, I, was, I was honestly so shocked. I'm like, really? Because I know a whole bunch of like my friends and other people like applied for the open call. Mm -hmm. And but I really put my heart and soul into it. So like um, I really made something that like meant a lot to me that I feel like a lot of people can resonate with. So um, I'm really happy I applied and I'm super, super honored, like I said, to be, um, you know, showcasing something like that. And like, this means the world to me. So I appreciate all of you guys and thank you. <laughs> yeah, no, that's really, it's really great. Uh, so Chris, let's talk about uh, the artist in residence uh, this year, Brian Blade. Uh, tell us about him and, and how excited we should be to see him uh, on stage Labor Day. Indeed, I can tell you that many people got introduced to him uh, when he was in the famous trio with John Petitucci and Daniel Perez with Wayne Shorter for all those years. And uh, but, you know, his his solo career, the Fellowship Band and what he's done with, oh, my goodness, Herbie Hancock. I mean, you name it. He's been there. Um, but, you know, his um, uh, he appeals to so many generations with his music. It's an incredible, unique artistic vision and texture. And as I said, he's bringing that to bear in three different performances throughout the fest, as I explained. But there's also members of his band, as you can imagine, that are quite significant. And in fact, at the Gretchen C. Ballet Jazz Center at Wayne State University, we are gonna be featuring a little series called the Midtown After Hours Special. Hmm. So on Friday night from 10 to one, a showcase of four of the incredible upcoming bands from a new generation from around the country. On Saturday, from Brian's band, the great Kurt Rosenwinkel in Trio, something you will not see at the festival, that's at 10.30. And on Sunday, uh, 10.30 will be uh, Brian's pianist, John Coward, playing solo piano concert on our beautiful Steinway 9-foot Model D that Steinway uh, got four of them for us to choose from and a bunch wow. of artists played. And I'm telling you, between the Blade Center being designed specifically for jazz, acoustically, and this beautiful instrument that John Coward is going to be special. So it's uh, it's something we're, uh, we're really looking forward to and looking forward to having the festival expand in that direction with Wayne State and uh, create an affiliation that will continue to grow as uh, yeah. as the does. Yeah, uh, Chris, I, I want to have you talk a little about the, the Valade Center as well. Uh, you just mentioned that it's designed specifically uh, for jazz music. I know that that uh, this was a passion project of yours as well for a long time to get this done. Um, uh, tell us what you think of what we've got here. Well, you know, the vision uh, that that Gretchen had, I mean, we were looking at buildings all over Detroit, and then the opportunity came up to do it in dominant Wayne State, so it would be preserved in perpetuity. I had to argue with her to put her name on the building. <laughs> she's so humble. But this is to stand for her and for jazz and for that uh, sensibility of giving. But the idea was to create a very high-end Detroit Jazz Hall, which seats about up to 340 people and has all the accoutrement of a, a big facility, but acoustically designed, backline designed, sound, the back of house, dressing room, everything is designed with the jazz world in mind. And then downstairs, a second venue, which she named Dee Dee Bridgewaters, and Dee Dee will be with us for the opening and the festival, is like the hippest club jazz setting you're ever going to see but both of them are full of 
you know, high definition streaming capability, recording capability. So there should be live records coming from there. And I think the important thing is that meant a lot to Gretchen, meant a lot to me, and means a lot to Wayne State yeah. is that to elevate jazz, to create a venue for jazz that is equitable with the highest level of European and other art forms, to, to put it in that bracket, to show how important it is to Detroit. And I can tell you, Every detail was looked at to provide uh, jazz artists and jazz listeners with an experience they will never forget. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Patrick, I want to talk about where the center is and kind of how it activates a part of campus that is, uh, you know, uh, uh, I mean, it's in a part of Detroit that's also changing. Uh, and it brings the university kind of front and center in that in that part of the city. I mean, obviously Wayne is right there anyway, uh, but this is a more, I don't know, I feel like it's a more uh, public facing and, and maybe public embracing and welcoming part of the university. That, that's a big, that's a big change in that part of town for the university as well. Uh, yes, Stephen, you're correct. Uh, this, uh, the Hillbury Gateway Center, which the Gretchen C. Belayed uh, Center for Jazz is located, uh, is meant to be that southern uh, gateway to our campus. Um, you know, uh, it was a lot of thought given into uh, how to help continue to make Detroit more walkable and more welcoming. Uh, and so there was a lot of intentionality to the, the large glass panels where you can see into the foyer there. And uh, certainly the space where uh, Dean Alai and the uh, College of Fine Performing and Communications Arts, where they uh, the students do their plays. It's it's all right there on Cass Avenue, uh, but built right into uh, the uh, older building, uh, which certainly uh, was a challenge. But uh, I think blending the uh, history uh, with the the future, uh, the symbolism, uh, uh, in, in my opinion, is is perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Chris, so speaking of the future, uh, let's talk about the future of the festival, the future of jazz, how you're feeling about all those things uh, now that you've been doing it for 45 years. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, uh, greater people than me uh, started this thing <laughs> way back in uh, Coleman Young days when Coleman went to Bob McCabe and mm -hmm. said, I'm going to keep you around and you love jazz. Let's start a jazz festival. Uh, but, uh, you know, it, it the, the future of jazz looks great because new generations are always, you know, taking, building on the language and moving it forward right here in Detroit. I like to celebrate not just the legacy uh, but also the the real legacy of the Detroit scene, which is to, to learn the history, to internalize it, but then build on it and find your own voice, your own direction. And that, that is very much the word of the day in the Detroit jazz scene. And then jazz in general is opening up to all these different cultural elements. At the festival, there's a, we use media in new ways with artists. Kyle Eastwood, there'll be videos of him interviewing with his father, Clint Eastwood, on the great music of those films. Mm -hmm and then recreating it and embellishing it with full Detroit Jazz Fest Symphony Orchestra and Kyle's Quintet. You know, so it's how do we use jazz? How do we how do we uh, grow jazz in different directions? It's a living, breathing art that never stands still for a moment. So we want to capture that and forward it. And as far as the festival, you know, our, my goal while I'm here is to keep, as Gretchen asked me to do, <laughs> keep it jazz yeah. and keep it free so yeah. that everybody's welcome. And uh, that's... That's a, a challenge every year. Everyone can help when they're when they when they can. But the key is uh, to keep it going in that direction, so that we can maintain a very special part of our, our cultural heritage and celebrate the future in new ways. Yeah. And of course, the expansion with uh, the Gretchen Siebel A Jazz Center at Wayne State, it's an indication, uh, you know, we're slowly spreading out the footprint, moving in different directions to include the whole city. And uh, this year is gonna be a trial run with Midtown, thanks to our friends uh, at on the, uh, 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 the, the Q line and, uh, you know, they're gonna have great transportation from the footprint to the Belate Center. And uh, we're gonna we're gonna make it work. It's gonna be an exciting addition. And I think it's one that will evolve significantly. Yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, Chris, Patrick, and Jess, uh, congratulations to everybody on another great jazz festival. Good luck to you, Jess, uh, of course, in the future. And uh, we'll look for more of your work uh, around town. But thanks to all three of you for being here on the American Black Journey. Thank, Thank you. you.